And before we officially start webinar 4, uh, may we request everyone to stand up from wherever you are, stretch a bit, and follow the steps to the Ako Para Sabata 2021 Dance Challenge. I'll demonstrate again the basic steps to our call sign, so please follow me. Ako, tayo, para, sabata. Again, ako, tayo, para, sabata. So Gabe, stand up and let's do it together. Okay, thank you so much for participating. And now, may I turn you over to the moderator of Ako Para Sa Bata Webinar 4, Coping with COVID Pandemic Fatigue. She specializes in obstetrics and gynecology and is a medical officer for at, uh, the West Visayas State University Medical Center. Department of ob -Gyne. She is a graduate um, of the Certificate of Women and Children Protection Specialty of CPN, a top-notcher in the local residence in-service exam in 2016 and 2018, and top two in the National Residence in-Service Exam in 2017. Everyone, let us all welcome Dr. Rachel Ann Huele Franco. Hello, everyone. And welcome to the webinar for Bako Para Sa Bata 2021, entitled Coping with COVID Pandemic Fatigue. We are in full capacity in our Zoom, and we have a total of 1.8 thousand viewers on the Ako Para Sa Bata Facebook page. On behalf of the Child Protection Network Foundation and UNICEF, we are deeply grateful for your support. The objective of today's webinar is to share insights and practical knowledge in combating COVID-19 today, specifically to discuss mindfulness and its benefits to this time of pandemic, to introduce the concept of rope flowing, and to demonstrate meditations and exercises which can help cope with pandemic fatigue. We have resource persons who will discuss some of the ways to cope with fatigue. Dr. Lopez will present mindfulness, while Do Mr. Goseco will introduce the concept of rope flowing. I hope you will have you all have your ropes with you so we can follow the exercises later. Our first resource person is a psychologist at the Jaime C. Bulatao SG Center for Psychology Services. Ateneo de Manila University. She has conducted various trainings on mindfulness, cognitive-based therapy, and is a part-time faculty at the Ateneo de Manila University. She is an affiliate of the Psychological Association of the Philippines and the Pambansang Samahan ng Psikolohiyang Filipino. To present mindfulness, let us hear from Dr. Hilda Dance Lopez. Good morning to everybody. My name is Hilda Dance Lopez, and uh, I am a clinical psychologist, and I'm also part of the faculty of the psychology department of Ateneo. So thank you for inviting me to this webinar, and I, I understand na you would like to have some exercises to help you lang to cope with the stressors that you face during your work with abused children. And as I understand, you need to do very difficult 
um, tasks. Sometimes your caseloads are very heavy and you have to handle children in difficult situations and even rescue them and even go to their homes apart from pre-pandemic situations where this was by itself also already very difficult. I also understand that there's the additional threat of um, getting infected by COVID while doing your duties. And also, of course, many of you have your own families. So you also have family concerns apart from um, concerns about all the people that you need to help. Well, I was thinking that ano ba yung appropriate um, intervention for you? Uh, maybe I can say that what helps me go through very difficult situations, like for one, while I'm in the situation already. Okay, so one of the exercises I do when I'm very stressed or naiinis na ako while in the situation is to do the calming breaths. Okay, so this is a very easy exercise that you can do whenever you feel very anxious or nervous or worried or because you have so many things to do, your brain kind of clogs up. Ang tawag nila doon, brain fog. Parang hindi ka na makaisip mabuti kasi sa dami mong kailangan asikasuhin at kailangan mong isipin. So this calming breath, ang tawag din namin to, tinuturo din namin ito sa mga bata, ang sa Tagalog, ang, ang tawag sa kanya pampakalmang paghinga. So let's just try this very short exercise. It's only a one minute exercise, which you can do anytime that you're very stressed and anxious and worried. So all you have to do is just close your eyes and then inhale for five, for five counts and exhale for seven. I will lead, I will lead you right now. So breathe in for five, one, two, three, four, five. And exhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale for five, four, three, two, one. And exhale, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And do it twice more on your own. One last time. And maybe just one more. And you can open your eyes. So how does that feel? And so that's intended to bring oxygen to all your tense muscles and those parts of your body that are very tense. When we are nervous or worried or thinking so much, parang our neck, parang nag -ano tayo, we hold our breath. We hold our breath. And we forget to breathe. And so later on, ang sakit na ng mga balikat, sakit na ng ulo, because we forget to breathe. So that's why we can't think because everything is constricted, including our minds. So this, this calming breath is intended to bring good air energies into your system as you breathe in and then exhale all the toxins in your body for seven counts. So breathe in for five, all the good, uh, energies and then exhale all the toxins uh, and when you exhale it's longer seven counts because you want to expel as much bad energy from your body as you can okay so maybe that's the first exercise that i would recommend and you can do it anytime it's very easy Yuba. okay and now we'll do a second exercise Okay, 
And in mindfulness, this is called loving meditation. But um, even pre-mindfulness, uh, Father Bulatao, who was our founder of the psychology department in Ateneo, and who was also the founder of the Bulatao Center for Psychological Services of Ateneo, and he was my mentor. We would do this exercise all the time. And for me, it was very helpful before I went to see someone, a client for a session, or even just when I'm at home and there's just too many things going on and I'm worried about my kids or I'm worried about someone uh, far away or I'm worried for myself. I would do this meditation and it's also very helpful, not just for me, but also to give um, some good energies, not only for myself, but for others as well. Okay. So for this exercise, um, I will just ask you to keep your palms up like that. Okay. So and then you can just put it on your lap or you can hold it up if you want. Or, um, and then you can close your eyes if you want, but you can also just lower your eyes and look at your palms as we do this exercise if you don't wanna close your eyes. Okay, and then just find a comfortable position right now, wherever you're sitting with your back straight. And if it would be best if you had your feet flat on the floor, but if you prefer to hold them under your, your seat and sit cross-legged where you are, that's also okay. Okay, so we can start by just focusing on your breathing and just noticing how the air moves from your nostrils and down to your lungs as you breathe in. And how the air moves from your lungs and out as you breathe out. And just enjoying this very relaxing situation where you just focus on your breath. And you might hear sounds outside. And that's okay if you do sound, hear sounds. You can also feel some silence inside of you. And some of you might even focus on the sound of your breath if you can hear your breathing. Or you might even hear the beating of your heart if you can hear it. And that could be very relaxing. Or you might feel how cool or warm the air is around you. Maybe there's an electric fan blowing or maybe there's none. And just noticing how the air caresses your face. And you feel soothed and calm as the air touches your face. Noticing how cool or warm the air is as it touches your face. And this also calms you down and relaxes you. And just enjoying this relaxed state right now. Imagining too that there's a light above you. And this light shines down on you. 
as if you're in the shower. And just feeling this light as it shines on you. Washing away your worries and concerns. Feeling it on your head. Clearing the mind as it washes your worries and concerns. Feel it on your face as it washes the tension in your face. Feeling this light on your shoulders and noticing how it washes away the pain and the tension and the burdens that you feel on your shoulders. Feel that light shining on your arms, releasing all the tense muscles and making them relax. Feeling that light washing your chest, washing away those heartaches and that nervousness. Making you feel and breathe more easily. Washing away the tension in your tummy. Washing away the pain from your back. And the pain on your hips. Washing away the tiredness that you feel on your thighs, in your knees, in your calves. And as this light continues to shine on you, washing away all those bad energies, washing it down to the ground and onto the earth below you. And imagining too that even as the light washes away all those worries, all those pains and tension, it also brings this loving care for you. Feeling the loving care from this light as if it's embracing you and giving you the love and good energies that you need. And you feel those good energies and the love and caring as the light shines on your head, in your face, feeling all this love and caring as it shines on your shoulders, in your chest, in your heart, making breathing so much easier. Feeling this light, bringing grace and good energy to your back and hips and tummy and your thighs, your knees and washing you again and again with good graces and love and caring. Just enjoying this for a moment. And thinking about the people you care for. And maybe the children that you will be meeting and their families too. 
and the people you will be working with in the next few moments. And just sharing this light with them, this grace and this love and this caring that you have received from the light. Sharing this light with them by holding up your hand in your palm. Feeling your palms release that good light, that good energy. And allowing that light to shine on these people that you care for. And imagining them That, own, that you and these people you love and care for are covered by this loving light. And just staying in this moment for a little bit more. Allowing it to wash your worries and nervousness. Allowing it to love you and care for you. Allowing it to be sent to those you love and care for. And whenever you're ready, you can just bring your attention back to your breathing. Just thanking the light for what it has given you today. And bringing your attention back to your breathing. And whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. There. And you can do this exercise wherever and whenever you feel that you are filled with anxious energies and nervousness. Or when you just feel so stressed and need something to wash away all of your stressors and worries. So... Yeah, and how was that for you? And while I won't be here with you while you do the meditation, you know that you can always do it and listen to this recording every time you need to. So I hope that was helpful for you. Um, although this is a, parang what I did was also a practice in mindfulness, parang it's a variation. It's not the Western kind of mindfulness. Uh, it's adapted to the Filipino environment. Pero meron siyang equivalent dun sa Buddhist practice of mindfulness. What is mindfulness? Is mindfulness is about, uh, well, in general, it's a, uh, movement it's actually a buddhist uh, set of practices but it's not really just buddhist it's also common parang it's like 
prayer also. There's a, there are meditations where you look inside of yourself and notice what's going on inside of you. So parang the focus is not always other people, other people, syempre, because we also need to take care of ourselves, diba? So mindfulness is about being mindful of what's going on inside of you. And so parang if you take care of yourself, then you, it would be easier for you to take care of other people. And also it's about um, being congruent between your thoughts and your actions. So if you're already stressed and nervous and you try to deny that, parang that's bad for your system kasi parang you're exerting energy to push away, push away the stress and nervousness. And that's not going to work kasi parang what you're doing really is to just accumulate. Naiipon lang lahat ng iyong bad energy sa body mo. So sometimes we have ano ba may masakit na yung balikat, masakit na yung likod kasi naipon na yung stress, ba? Kasi we try so hard, I need to do this, I need to do that. Ganyan, dami nating mga shoulds and shoulds and so parang um, when we push it away, naiipon, hindi siya nawawala kasi parang and then we become very tense, our head becomes so full because of all those things that we cannot um, yung mga galit natin, di natin masabi kasi dapat siyempre kung social worker ka, dapat um, mabait ka or what. Kahit yung mga doktor, kailangan mabait, mga nurse. Tsaka yan ang tinuro sa atin na huwag magagalit, masama yan, blah, 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 blah. So naiipon sa loob ng katawan natin yung mga bad energies natin. And then we say, hindi, dapat hindi yan pansinin. So ang mindfulness, <laughs> kontra doon ang sinasabi niya pansinin niyo pansinin niyo kasi pagka hindi niyo pansinin maapektuhan na yung health niyo maapektuhan na yung body niyo and then so the next question is what do we do with it di ba I, ano ba itatapon namin doon sa mga ibang tao kasi if you do parang nagkalat ka ng lagim and so parang Mindfulness parang teaches exercises on what you can do with all those bad energies. Huwag mo ipunin. Okay, so yung first exercise, the calming breath, um, addresses the fact that sometimes when we, we are so angry and we're so tense, we hold our breath, and then all our muscles kind of like contract. Sumasakit siya kasi wala siyang oxygen. Nawawala yung oxygen sa body. And so we need to do the calming breath just to remind us that we need our body and our muscles do need oxygen and we exhale all the excess um, bad energies or carbon dioxide na naiwan na sa ating katawan. Okay, and then the second exercise, what do you do when you're so anxious and worried about, for example, you're away from your family or you're so anxious and worried about um, that COVID will... Well, you'll get COVID ganun, despite vaccination or you're worried about the family that you will visit at lahat ng kanilang galit sa iyo i- i- ibubuhos ganun. or you're worried about this kid who is being abused what do you do with that diba? and then you're so worried and nervous when you go and rescue the child na parang you become ineffective because you get so tongue-tied trying to suppress all of the negative energies inside of you. So before you go into that kind of situation, you can do the loving meditation that we just did. Uh And send that loving energy, not just, it's not just for yourself, but for other people. So in... uh, in the mindfulness meditation, major abbreviated, they just say, may I be loved, may I feel calm, may I feel peaceful. And then you send the same loving energies to other people. May they be loved, may they feel peace, may they feel calm. And then you send it to everyone in the room. 
may we all feel love, may we all feel at peace with ourselves, may, all, may we all feel calm. Okay, so that's the loving kindness meditation. Um, in brief, you can also do that if you wish and if you prefer a very short one. But for me, the light meditation is very effective because it also washes off all my body pains before I get myself into a very difficult situation. Plus, I send good energies also to the people I love and who I haven't seen in a long time, like my mother, kasi siyempre matanda na siya, so we try to stay away. Um, to my daughters who don't live here and who I cannot see, and all my grandchildren who ca I cannot hug and see physically because of this pandemic, and I worry about people, of course. So I do that, and it's very helpful. The next day, I find that everything is okay, especially if things were not going okay to begin with. So, yon, in short, that's what the meditations are about. And I will leave you with that for now. And say also thank you for helping our children. Thank you very much, Dr. Lopez. Indeed, that was a very relaxing and a stress reliever from all the frontliners out there who are taking care of the children of those COVID pandemic um, frontliners and, of course, those who are uh, at the hospitals taking care of the victims of the uh, um, COVID-19. So how did you feel? Did you feel relaxed? Did you, did you release all your stress? all your anger and your worries. Thank you very much, Dr. Lopez, for that very um, relaxing moment with us. So I'm going to read some comments on the chat box from our, um, from our attendees. And an update is we have uh, already 2,200 uh, 2, viewers on Facebook Live. Thank you very much, everyone. And on Zoom, we have a total of one point, um, sorry, uh, we have 1,024 viewers on our Zoom. So from Dr. Petty Berrimoy, Dr. Lopez is a very calm and soothing voice. Listening to her alone has brought relaxation to me. Wow, Dr. Petty, ha, grabe naman yung pag-meditate uh, pag, uh, natin. So um, another comment is from Miss Jane Sheeran. Thank you, Dr. Lopez. The meditation exercise helped me a lot to the current situation. Thank you very much, Dr. Lopez. And of course, marami pa pong nagsasabi na very helpful daw yung na-share ni Dr. Lopez na meditations for us. Okay? So, indeed, this COVID-19 pandemic has had a lot of major effects in our lives. Many of us are facing challenges that can be stressful, overwhelming, and cause strong emotions in adults and also on children. It is a natural feeling to feel stress, anxiety, grief, and worry during this pandemic. Learning to cope with this stress in a healthy way will make you and the people are, you care about and those around you become more resilient. Okay, so now... Um, so like what Dr. Lopez said, feel free to do these exercises whenever you feel stressed or even regularly just to start your day. Okay, so now are you ready to have more fun and to switch to a more active um, interaction with our next speaker and get some adrenaline? Are your ropes ready? So let us proceed to our next presenter. Our next Resource person is the head coach and specialist of Rope Flow PH. He is a clinical clerk at the Medical City and currently taking up Doctor of Medicine and Masters of Business Administration at the Ateneo School of Medicine and Public Health. To discuss rope flowing through the pandemic, ladies and gentlemen, let us give a warm welcome to Gabriel J. Gosepo. Good morning, everyone. Before I begin this presentation, I just want to thank the organizing committee of Ako Para Sabata 
for inviting Roku Philippines to discuss this relatively new fitness practice which can help with coping with pandemic fatigue. Now, it is common knowledge that exercising has physical benefits, and I want to show you today that exercising can even have mental health benefits too. However, with the closure of gyms and other fitness establishments, it is difficult to exercise. Fortunately, home workouts became a trend early in the pandemic, and during the same time when people were making ube cheese pandasal or making dalgona coffee in their kitchens, Filipinos were also getting creative with their own physical activity and practice. So I'm thoroughly excited to share with you today Rope Flow, which is one of those practices, which is a novel exercise training that anyone and everyone can try out and gain the many benefits this practice has to offer. Just to quickly introduce myself, I am Gabriel Gaseco, and generally speaking, I am a fitness enthusiast. I competed in powerlifting in the collegiate and open level before entering the Ateneo School of Medicine and Public Health. Currently, I am a medical intern at the Medical City. So I was one of the first adopters of ProFlow in the country and I started to seriously practice it during my clerkship when face-to-face -face hospital rotations got suspended. I saw the value of ProFlow as a means to promote physical and mental health. Hence, I pursued the necessary training to become a certified coach. Because of my fitness background, I have became a lifestyle advocate and I personally share exercises and routines on my Instagram page and during community sessions with Rope Flow Philippines, where we train new and intermediate followers. In this presentation, I hope to provide awareness to Rope Flow. I hope to share with you what Rope Flow is and what benefits can be gained from this practice. I'll present you a short background of how the practice developed in order to help you appreciate how it became popular here in the Philippines. Next, I will discuss how it helped many Filipinos cope with the fatigue brought about from the pandemic. In the second section, I will discuss how different communities in the country were formed by those who wanted to share their practice to their family and friends. Finally, to close the presentation, I will impart practical advice that everyone here can follow personally and things that they can share to their own family and friends in order, to, for, in order for them to start their own Rope flow journey. So, what is rope flow exactly? For many people, it is very difficult to distinguish between rope flow and jump rope. Some movement patterns are similar, and of course, there's a rope involved. But the similarities end there. During the pandemic, when home workouts were becoming popular, jump rope became a very accessible tool to use since it is already well known. It is not so difficult to learn, and I'm sure that everyone will agree that it is an excellent cardio exercise. It is not surprising then that it became even more popular during the lockdown. Initially, all their cardio exercises such as running or biking were disallowed. Many Filipinos then resorted to buying a jump rope in order to do cardio at home. Because of this popularity, many Filipinos also started to become curious about rope flow because it really does look similar to jump rope. Now look at these two pictures. On the left, you can see someone doing jump rope. On the right, you can see someone doing the dragon roll, which is one of the moves of rope flow. On closer inspection, however, you can see that the biggest difference between jump rope and rope flow is that the person on the right is actually not jumping. So if you were like me who saw this move for the first time, then you're probably thinking, how is the person on the right not jumping? How is he bringing the rope over his head without actually going over the rope. So this kind of curiosity becomes a common theme for many rope flowers. There's a sense of excitement and eagerness to try moves that you see like this. And it also motivates you to keep practicing and try to get the moves yourself. As much as rope flow is a physical exercise, I would argue that it is also a cognitive exercise since you try to figure out and work out the different moves and sequences of rope flow. Alright, at this point, I actually want to do a little experiment. If you're willing, I want you to stand up and actually imitate the picture you see in front of you. Now, these guys are doing one of the most basic moves of rope flow. It is called the race and chase. And you can notice here that they're doing an underhand motion where they're doing like an uppercut motion. So you can try doing this with a rope or without a rope or if you want, even with a towel. So go ahead if you want. While watching this presentation, try to imitate this pattern and during the whole presentation, you can just stand up and imitate it because standing up and moving around is good for you. Now, how do we do this exactly? First, you want to stand up tall. You want to have a slight bend in the knees. And with that starting position, you want to swing both arms to one side. 
either the right or the left and then pause there know where you are and then swing your arms again to the other side pause again know where you are super simple right but as you can see in the picture there's a lot of articulation involved so keep repeating the movement swinging your arms back and forth back and forth but while you're swinging your arms to one side try to exaggerate the motion from your hands to the elbow to the shoulder but it doesn't stop there you also want to rotate your torso and feel your back stretch on one side and contract on the other now follow through with the hips and all the way to the ankle now that's the basic movement so you can see that you're only doing the underhand in the picture but there's another pattern involved which is called the overhand and the number of patterns just keep multiplying from there now if you actually stood up and tried the underhand race and trace thank you for participating feel free to keep trying that movement as i go on with the powerpoint before i proceed to the next parts however i just want to give a really quick background on the rope training because we want to acknowledge david Weck, who is the inventor of this training method he really emphasized the rotational movement training that you can get with the ropes however he only focused on athletic performance in mind because he wanted to use these patterns to really train movement and strength in all planes of directions his patterns were meant to be drilled and trained and then use it to translate to athletic movement i'm not sure if you feel it while doing the moves but the movements are meant to carry over into locomotion and functional movement however in row flow we expanded that kind of method so from the rotational movement training of the WEC method we transition the practice into rope flow where we also emphasize and practice personal expression here at rope flow we want to facilitate flow we want to synchronize the mind and body in order to perform different movements and patterns that also emphasizes the way we actually express the movement of course, you can do both wherein you put in the reps and, the, and practice the technique. But in rope flow, we really break from the athletic approach and we encourage getting creative with the moves and sequences one can do. As you can see in the pictures here, depending on the move you do and the exaggeration of the body articulation, you can achieve an artistic form. So personal expression comes in depending on your style. Some people would really like to look like look like they're dancing by really tuning into a beat. We've also seen people that have a martial arts background who flow like they're using a weapon. They really weaponize the rope and have their own personal touch to it. Some can go really slow and really focus on the stretch and articulation in order to get that stretch. And it also becomes meditative that way. There are just so many ways to flow and you can really just develop your own way of expressing it through your own personal practice and the, the possibilities are endless and you can see even through the videos online that each one has their own signature touch with these things in mind we can define rope flow at least for the purposes of this presentation as a personal movement practice incorporating specific rope patterns to promote physical and mental well-being I will discuss each of these points one by one in order to really emphasize the different aspects of what row flow is and what row flow can offer. Row flow is a personal practice because you can dictate how you use the rope. You can make a workout intense by following a fast beat or maybe even go slow. You can incorporate only the basic movement patterns or get creative with the more challenging ones. You can do row flow as a warm up for another exercise such as running or even weightlifting. And you can also use the rope as the main workout. When you can alternate between slow and easy intervals with fast and hard, it becomes a really effective high intensity interval training. You can easily direct your own workout depending on your fitness goals or possible limitations. The biggest advantage of rope flow is its versatility. It can be used by serious athletes or even sedentary persons who just want to add more movement into their daily activity. Since rope flow is not impact, those with limitations such as injuries or chronic pain can practice this. You can get a decent workout without stressing your joints. It is also advantageous compared to other non-impact exercises, such as biking or swimming, because you only need some space and a rope to perform the activity. You can even practice it right in your bedroom. So after you get the basic moves such as the race and chase, 
or the matadors, and also have mastery of the overhand and underhand variations of these moves, you can explore the more advanced moves. So some of the advanced moves include the sneak, the cheetah steal. It's hard to explain, it's hard to demonstrate in this PowerPoint. So what I recommend is that you go online right now, search for Roflo or Roflo Philippines. You can also go to the Instagram page where you can see the different moves that you can do and the different patterns you can achieve when you have mastery of these moves. You can also check out the Rec Method page, either the Instagram or even the YouTube to see the basic moves performed. And you can see how these are done in isolation. And you can also appreciate how it's difficult to actually flow because you want to link these moves all together smoothly. So go ahead, just search online as I go through the PowerPoint so you can also appreciate it. Now how about mental well-being? Exercise has been long studied to show that it improves mood. One meta-analysis from the Polish Psychiatric Association way back in 2004 found that exercise has a positive effect both on healthy people and those with clinical disorders. Now, the meta-analysis really just studied the research that really emphasized the physical and physiological effects of exercise. There are many other factors out there such as the environment or the people you are with when you exercise, but it really just shows that exercise by itself already improves mood. Now, the important aspect here is that through the review, they have shown that physical exercise has a positive effect in the prevention of anxiety and depressive symptoms, as well as the improvement of mood state and quality of life. Another meta-analysis done in 2013 from researchers from the Anxiety and Depression Association of America corroborated the findings of the previous study, highlighting the power of physical exercise to improve feelings of anxiety. Now, I decided to highlight these two meta-analyses because it really shows and compiles the many studies done on physical exercise. And the findings really does show that there is a link between improving one's mood while exercising, which it also has lasting effects beyond doing the exercise itself. So these two analyses recommend exercising for set periods of time that are not far from the recommendations of the American Heart Association. People would also feel the benefits from continuous and consistent exercise over weeks. So it is prudent to also highlight that adherence to an exercise regimen is an important aspect of getting the mental health benefits. So given these findings, the benefits of Roflo to mental health is summarized nicely by an anecdote from a fellow Roflo practitioner. So allow me to read this. Roflo or RF is definitely good for mental health because it gives me something to look forward to, to be excited again for something, learning something new and connecting with new people. So Roflow provides the mental health benefits as an exercise, as previously, previously described, but it also serves like a toy, providing a childlike joy. Roflow promotes play and exploration, just like a toy, because you can try out new moves and sequences. You think of things you can do with, you, with it and your body and try to execute the different movement patterns. When things become automatic and you are freely flowing without much thought, we call that entering a flow state. This flow state provides a meditative experience as you become aware of your body and its relationship with the rope. You get a sense of control once you master the rope because you can freely manipulate it at will. However, the flow state doesn't just come when you master the rope. The process of learning the movements contributes to your sense of well-being. You get boosts of dopamine as you concentrate on successfully performing moves. You also get boosts of serotonin as you finally achieve the patterns you want to perform. There are thousands of others like you who are trying to achieve this flow state and it's a journey that people go together with the help of social media since you can directly share your experiences. I will discuss this in the succeeding part but we also have a community where we have different sessions where we can actually see the progress of people in person. Learning rope flow means learning rope flow together and, get, and you get to explore movements and exercise at the same time like never before. So given the context of rope flow, as an exercise tool that has both physical and mental benefits, you can clearly see now how it's effective at helping combat pandemic fatigue. One of the points that I want to emphasize is that to gain the benefits of exercise, it is important to adhere to it. Now, my argument here is that Proflow is an excellent tool to adhere to exercise because there's different ways to motivate you. 
one of the what source of motivations for this is the, the desire to achieve new moves and patterns. It can definitely be frustrating at the start, especially when you're trying to learn new moves. And believe me, it's it's difficult because these are some moves that you've never done in your life, and it takes a while to get used to actually performing the moves. And as I mentioned before, Rofu is very versatile, and it's a trainee's adaptability that makes it easy to keep practicing. So when you're stuck at home with nothing to do, you can just rope row, grab the rope and just do rope row, learn moves and keep practicing. So in the end, exercising may not actually be the goal for some people. Some people just want to get the moves and that's already a good motivator. However, as your personal practice develops, you end up developing your form and expression too. And when you reach this level of skill, you unlock a sort of flow state, which is very addictive too in a good way. When you become good, you can just play your favorite music, you can just flow to the beat, you end up enjoying the music and having a good time. Now one of the ways to have a good time while doing this is really just have a light and moderate activity while listening to music or even while you're watching Netflix. It's a really good way to keep exercising. One author phrased the mental health benefits of exercise perfectly in a paper back in 1978. Allow me to read the quote. Successful completion of an exercise regimen, especially at a higher intensity, may engender a sense of mastery. That is, exercise may reinforce adaptive beliefs that one has the power to influence his or her environment and bring about desired outcomes. The thing about row flow is that you actually don't need a higher intensity workout to achieve a sense of mastery. Because once you achieve some moves, you already gain that sense of mastery. In the same way, you can run faster or farther or maybe lift heavier weights when you exercise. There is already a concrete sense of progression as you get better at the ropes. The better you get, the more confident you are. And the more confident you are, the more fun it is to flow because you are capable of such of much more. So personally, the, sens- the sentiment is what greatly helped me to combat pandemic fatigue or being stuck at home during the strict lockdown. During this time, you might feel powerless because there are many restrictions or that there are many things that you want to do but you can't because you don't want to compromise your safety. I feel better personally when I practice Rofu because despite the number of things I cannot control, there are still many aspects of my life that I can control and one of that is my own movement practice. The side effect was that my body felt better and I also lost weight in the, pro- in the process. The sense of achievement from either performing moves or even feeling the actual physical and mental benefits is very gratifying. So another aspect of Rofu is the community and I must say the community is amazing. Everyone is more than willing to share what they know, and some also want to show off what they can do. We're relatively, we're relatively a small community since we're new, and we welcome newcomers. It is very special because it's easy to find other people who rope through, through the different Instagram pages or social media. You can get many ideas for different moves, patterns, or even kinds of ropes. So during the lockdown, it was easy to connect to people online because of the shared commonality of rope through. I've gotten in touch with so many people and it really warms my heart to see people getting interested in rope flow either as just a hobby or even as a means to improve their lifestyle. Through our communities, we were able to have group sessions in safe outdoor settings following the proper protocol. As I mentioned, rope flow is very versatile and can be done anywhere. And I'm telling you, being outdoors while getting sun exposure is a great environment for learning a new skill and getting your minimum effective dose of exercise for the day. It is during these sessions when we were able to connect to people personally. We share stories and achievements with each other. Personal connection is without a doubt an important aspect to combat pandemic fatigue, and participating in these sessions made me realize that even if I practice true flow at home, I share the journey and experience with thousands of others out there. To summarize everything so far, rope flow can be used as a tool to help with feelings of anxiety or even of isolation during this lockdown, during this pandemic. Rope flow can be used as an exercise to quickly boost your endorphins and also to have a better sense of self-mastery and control of your situation. Rope flow can also be used to connect with other people and you can see as you practice, as you connect with more people, that your rope flow journey is shared by many others and that really gets you that sense of connection that is difficult during this pandemic. So finally, what are some of my takeaways for this session? How can we personally share this practice and even share the knowledge of rope flow in our everyday lives to our family and friends? I want to highlight again 
the importance of adherence to exercise to gain the benefits it has to offer. This is important because you need a minimum effective dose per day in order to actually get the benefits. Now, based on my own data gathering of my exercises with my sports watch, I can self-report that doing rope flow can easily get you into the correct zone of training to get the benefits. Now, you want to hit around zone 2 or zone 3, which is around 100 to 130 beats per minute depending on the person, and you want to maintain this intensity for about 30 minutes. Now, the American Heart Association recommends at least a 30-minute session of this moderate intensity for 5 days a week for a total of 150 minutes. However, if you want to lower blood pressure and cholesterol, moderate and high-intensity exercises should be done for up to 30 to 40 minutes per day for maybe around 3 to 4 days in order to be effective at lowering the blood pressure and cholesterol. And again, the versatility of the rope is important here because you can really dictate the intensity of the rope depending on how fast you swing it. So think about it this way. How long is one episode on Netflix, for example? Instead of sitting down or lying down, you can actually be flowing. Again, you don't need a lot of space, so it is very viable. You can also, you can also listen to music or even podcasts and one episode can last you a long time. So if you really just focus on the movement and exercising, it's easy to get the 30 minutes. Believe me, if you're like me or other people, you're really focusing on trying to get the moves. You're going to get the daily dose that you need per day. Of course, I want to showcase the potential of rope flow for the pediatric population. The American Heart Association also recommends a longer period of exercise per day for children, this can range from 40 minutes to 1 hour. And if you give them a rope, they'll see it as a toy as well. And they'll be swinging it and swinging it and they'll expend a lot of energy. Of course, you might need a lot more space for them, especially if they're um, a bit more hectic, like the person on the right. You can see he's trying to perform the dragon roll, which is not bad. But you really need a lot of space, and you should be able to teach your kids well. You need to be able to emphasize the form in order to help them achieve the best possible outcome. You want to be able to know the form yourself so that you can teach the technique, so that you can actually help them with their own rope flow journey as well. Another thing I want to share is that there are many many resources online and you can explore them. So I mentioned it before, rope flow is a journey. It may not always be easy and there are some experts out there that make it look easy. However, there's always something new to learn regardless whether you're a beginner or advanced and there are many ways to learn it. As I mentioned again also, the combination of moves are endless. So you want to look for the resources out there that can help you depending on your level. So if you're learning the basic moves, I recommend checking out the WEC Method YouTube page where they have a lot of resources showing you all the basic moves, all for free. And if you want to get into flow, you want to learn different sequences, you can check out the Row Flow page and other Row Flow pages out there that also has many combinations that you can learn. When you get into the flow, being strict about the sequences then doesn't really matter, but you can draw so many inspiration so much inspiration from these pages or even the different pages out there abroad. When you have a better sense of mastery and you see the cool moves in the videos, I bet you will also be curious to try it out. Check the resources online because it helps you inspire you to keep practicing, to keep exercising, and therefore get the benefits of it as well. When we brought rope flow to the Philippines last year, our group was really small. We were really just a few people in Montenupa who were practicing and learning rope flow. However, as time progressed and many more people were practicing it, the, commu the different communities emerge in different parts of the Philippines. So we have communities as you can see here from Batangas, from Pampanga, all the way down to Siargao, from Bacolod, Tarlac, Cebu, and much, much more. There are a lot of communities popping up and it's really heartening to see these communities organically forming because it really just shows the power of growth flow and its power to connect with other people. There are also communities abroad. We've had several Filipinos um, looking for communities and we've helped them connect with 
um, different local suppliers and different communities who are also starting their own groups there. We have groups in Australia, in Indonesia even, there's also in Singapore, and much, much more. There's really just so many communities now. You just have to search what's available. You want to find an online community so that you're able to share what you can. However, if you find a local one, it's even better because you can um, be updated about physical events where you can have face-to-face -face sessions. And it's not surprising that it's easier to learn moves when it's face-to-face -face compared to if you're just watching a camera, if you're watching just a video and trying to imitate what it is. And as I mentioned before, the personal social connection is very important and it's easy to form these ones because you have this shared com commonality of role flow. You're able to share what you've achieved and you can also help others who are trying to, who are trying to do role flow for the first time. Being able to teach is also very gratifying. And you can see, you also share the, the joy and happiness when someone actually gets the move correctly for the first time. It's very exhilarating, it's very nice. And during this time, during the isolation that we feel, it's really nice to go out there, learn something new, and also meet new people. Finally, my last practical advice is to expand your personal practices. Rowflow is a great intersection between physical performance but also mindfulness. When you get into the flow or you get into the zone per se, Rowflow becomes meditative. Believe me, you have to try it out yourself to really experience this flow state. You get lost in the movement and you also become mindful of only the present. Once you get the feel of it, you should also explore though the different practices that you can achieve with Rowflow. An example of this is running. As you can see with the movement with the underhand raising trees, it really simulates the locomotive pattern you get while walking or running. You can also try jump rope, which also, in a way, carries over because you're getting the synchronicity of your body more. Now, another thing you can do is also improve on breathing exercises. Breathing is an important aspect to help calm down the sympathetic because if you breathe long and slow, you activate more of your parasympathetic or your rest and digest. Now, imagine that you're able to control your breathing while doing rope flow. It really gets you into a meditative state. You really get to calm down even while you're moving. That's why I, want, I like to describe rope flow as uh, movement meditation. Because you can really become mindful of the present, but move and exercise at the same time. It's, it's such a unique experience. I really recommend that you try it if you haven't tried it before. Now, once you actually figure this out while rope flowing, you can do this even without the rope. You can have breathing exercises. There are different kinds out there that can help you improve your mood. It can also generally help you oxygenate your body more in order to really feel better. When you finally figure out a way to meditate in your own way, it's also a good way to really be present in the moment. And really, it also helps you with your mental uh, mental state. Now, my main point is that Row Flow gives you the confidence to pursue and explore these different practices. You just have to find out what works for you. And again, stick to it in order to receive its full benefits. Row Flow is a tool that helps you achieve more confidence and again mastery in order to be able to expand your personal practice which again would would expand to even different practices out there so that ends my presentation and i really hope that i was able to provide more awareness of the existence of proflo and the many benefits it has to offer now it became popular during the pandemic for a good reason aside from providing a new hobby the rope can be used for so much more so again, if you're interested in starting your own rope flow journey, there are so many social media pages and websites to explore. Even after practicing rope flow for more than a year now, I am still learning a lot. I'm still learning something new. And that is all thanks to the community behind rope flow. We have time to answer questions now, but if ever we run out of time, it is very easy to reach us in a different community. So please, please feel free to contact us. For now, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Mr. Los um, Goseco, and congratulations 
to the real flow PH for achieving this community and for helping um, people no? um, um, coping with stress and uh, giving more um, activities during this pandemic. Even though this pandemic means many of us are staying at home and sitting down our, more than our, what, the hours that we usually do, there are regular physical activities that can help and give our days a routine that is good for our mental health, reducing the risk of depression, and improve overall feelings. You gain physical and mental health as well as you gain more friends. Um, just an update. We have a total of 2.3 thousand viewers on our Facebook Live and as well as um, 1,000 plus viewers on our lives, uh, on, on our Zoom um, conference. Okay, so as the previous webinars, we have invited youth representatives to share their insights and reactions to the presentations. We have two youth reactors, Christian Ray B. Ramo, a second year BS in electric, electrical from Iligan City, Lano del Norte, and Angelo L. Alisna, second year BS in civil engineering from San Jose del Monte, Bulacan. Over to you, Christian and Angelo. Good morning, everyone. First and foremost, I would like to um, take this opportunity to say super thank you to the Child Protection Network and UNICEF for inviting me here. It is a great, great privilege for me to speak in front of each and everyone on you on your screen right now. Um, again, my name is Christian Ray Ramo. I'm 19 years old from Iligan City, Lanal del Norte. I am a second year college student at Mindanao State University, Iligan Institute of Technology, where I am pursuing a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering. Um, I am a member and the auditor of the organization called Transform Active Youth Organization. And also I am a child safety rights advocate. Um, to our guest speakers, Dr. Lopez and Sir Gabriel, you really gave us such a meaningful and relaxing discussion. Like, mapapasabi ko na lang ng wow. Diba? Um, I do appreciate it, ma'am and sir. I can um, relate to what you've shared with us because um, I also practice meditations and exercises that can help me combat pan pandemic fatigue. Um, like every student, I have no idea what will happen to my education or whether I will be able to graduate properly, hug my teachers and say thank you, um, go on vacation with my friends and live my 19 year old life. There is this panic and it's like our lives have been reprogrammed. So the question is, how do I cope up? Of course, I practice self-care a lot to improve my life and reduce stress. And what are the self-care stuff that I always do? Number one is rest. I, a good night's sleep because it improves my ability to focus for longer periods of time. The second one is comfort. I make sure that I'm comfortable at all times, especially when studying. I adjust my posture, um, sit in a comfortable position, or even invest in a good study place. The third one is um, I reduce the I reduce the amount of time I spend on social media. The fourth one is take breaks. Throughout the day, I take frequent study breaks to refresh my mind, stretch my body. I take breaks that allow me to step away from the screens and enjoy the present moment. And lastly, number five, I always keep myself focused on the present because I believe it is the most effective tool for navigating these difficult times. When I think too um, widely, when the future is unknown, it can make me feel very anxious. I can function more effectively and practice gratitude and self-care if I study if I stay focused on what I need to accomplish today. And lastly, um, overall, we are all in this together. We must unite and help one another combat this problem for us to achieve the victory. Thank you very much. So ayan, isang magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Ako naman po si Angelo Alisna and I'm from VDES na Volunteers International Development, Education and Solidarity and I'm a youth leader and I'm also uh, like um, advocating children's rights for almost seven years, I think, or maybe six years. And I know, thank you also no, for having me here and being a reactor for the 
for this event, so for this webinar. At gusto ko po muna no, syempre pasalamatan yung ating mga guest speakers. Unang-una po si um Doc Gilda Dance Lopez and also Doc um Gabriel Goseco. So maraming maraming salamat po no sa napaka um fruitful at napakaganda nating um discussion kanina. Uh, gusto ko lang po bigyan ng emphasis na binigyan tayo ng dalawang option ano kung paano tayo makaka-cope up dito sa ating uh, sa, sa pandemic fatigue at napakaganda na magkaroon tayo ng option kasi hindi tayo marunong mag-cope up kasi hindi natin alam kung paano. So napakalaking tulong ng kat katulad ng mga gatong webinars and mga discussion kasi nabibigyan tayo ng idea na bubuksan yung ating mga kaisipan na kapag na-stress na ako, na-depress na ako, na magkakaroon ako ng anxiety, napapatanong tayo sa sarili natin na ano kaya yung maaari natin gawin? Di ba? May iwan tayo sa punto na yung napapatanong sa sarili natin, ano maaari natin gawin? And napakaganda na dito sa ginawang webinar and also discussion na nabigyan tayo ng kaalaman kung ano yung maaari natin gawin. At gusto kong sabihin na dapat mag-focus tayo sa dalawa rin. No? Sa dalawa din tayo mag-focus kasi dapat hindi lang inaalagaan natin yung ating isipan, no? pati na rin yung ating katawan. Kasi yung dalawang aspeto na po iyon is mahalaga. No? So gusto ko naman sabihin na Um, itong mga practices na to, no, yung meditation and yung shadow flow, uh, hindi, um, hindi lang po kasi siya pang matanda. No? Kasi madalas iniisip natin na uh, mostly nakaka-experience lang ng mga stress, no? uh, mga, mga fatigue, is yung mga matatanda. No? Dapat bigyan din natin ng uh, atensyon yung bata sapagkat nasabi nga kanina na lahat tayo may pinagdadaanan. So we are all fighters um, with, our own, with our own battles. And gusto ko pa sabihin na napakaganda ng epekto no ng dalawang coping mechanism po na ito. At gusto ko rin po sabihin sa ating lahat na hindi naman po siguro kalabisan na bigyan natin yung sarili natin ng oras, 'di ba? Para tayo makapag-relax kasi yun yung nagiging problema sa atin kaya nga katulad na nasabi kanina na iipon. So siguro sa isang araw kahit bigyan man lang natin yung oras natin ng ilang minuto, ilang oras, no bigyan lang natin kasi hindi naman yun kalabisan. No, para lang makahinga tayo, bigyan natin yung sarili natin ng hingahan kasi mahirap na maipon yung mga negative um, energy natin. Then, ayun po, no, katulad ganyan mo nang nasabi kanina sa dulo na sinabi yung rope, yung rope low, napakaganda po siya sa bata. No? So gusto ko rin pong sabihin na napakaganda niya, especially there are four categories of children's rights. And we have, um, we have and one of that is the development. And napakaganda po sa development ng bata, yung rope low, kasi sinabi din kanina, nagiging Um, naging backbone siya para sa iba pang mga practices. No? And also, gusto ko po kasing sabihin na nandito tayo sa panahon na kung saan yung mga bata, nagsiselfone na lang kasi sila palagi. So maganda, nabigyan natin sila na no, iba pang gagawin na kung saan makatutulong sa kanilang development. So ayun muli, maraming maraming salamat pa. And I'm Angelo Alisna from Vides Foundation. And gusto ko pong sabihin na iyon bigyan po natin ng oras yung sarili natin araw-araw dahil hindi naman po kalabisan na magpahinga. Yun lamang po. Maraming salamat. At gusto ko po sabihin na uh, maaari po tayong uh, mag, ma, maaari po tayong mag, ay, ma, hindi po tayong maaaring huminto pero maaari po tayong magpahinga. So and keep safe po everyone. Maraming maraming salamat po for having me here. Thank you very much Christian and Angelo. Thank you very much. We are happy that even though we are nearing the uh, second year na po na experiencing this under this pandemic, you have been very resilient and you have coped up with all the challenges that was brought about by this unexpected event. So Dr. Norieta Balderrama, Head of the Health and Wellness Services of the CPU PGH, will accommodate questions for Dr. Lopez and may I call on Dr. Balderrama, Mr. Goseco, and our two youth reactors, Christian and Angelo to join me in the Zoom space. So everyone is present now in our Zoom space. Thank you very much, Dr. Balderrama, Mr. Goseco, Christian and Angelo. They're very active participants. Thank you very much. Okay, so we will be um, reading questions from our Facebook Live and from our Q&A boxes. So this question is um, for, I think for Dr. Um, Gabriel Goseco. Is there a standard size rope for the activity? No, yes, um, that's a common question. Uh, um, the ropes that we use I mean, for rope flow actually is sailing ropes, uh, and we use sailing ropes because it's more big, actually, usually 500 grams, and it's more capable. Just because we want that feedback, it's uh, more effective exercise. But in experience, um, but then the jump rope. 
pwede naman yung um, lighter ropes. So, um, any ropes can be used naman for this exercise. Another question po is, um, where can we buy these ropes? Yung very common din na question dito. Um, thank you for your interest. No? Um, maraming, um, maraming nagbabenta ng ropes um, both online sa so Instagram or I think sa so Shopee na rin, um, there are people selling um, rope flow um, ropes. So if you search for rope flow and maraming, or even rope flow sa Google, maraming rin ano, lalabas. So I think it's easy to find naman. There are a lot of competitors both um, locally and also abroad. So maraming options for your rope flows. Maraming interesado talaga sa rope flow. You're, the Mostly of the questions are for, for you, Mr. Goseco. Can older person get into this form of exercise? Yes, yes, definitely. Um, not just older people, no. Even those with um, disabilities or especially joint pains. We have different um, community members who have arthritis, uh, mga elderly people talaga who have a hard time moving, or, or especially those with knee pain, no? Um, the good thing about rope flow, as I mentioned, is non impact siya. So even if you're exercising for long periods of time, um, walang damage to the joints, it's very easy to do. We have different patients such as those with Parkinson's or, or even um, even one patient who had uh, spinal uh, spinal surgery who can actually perform rope flow. Because it's really accommodating to to the body, really easy to the body. Okay, so another question there. Here is, is there an online opportunity, uh, community for rope flow? Diba? Kanina na mention yun na po, no? marami tayong uh, ano na, ano na, na mga communities all around the Philippines na meron ng rope flow PH, na under the rope flow PH. So this question is for Dr. Balderama. Um, do you have any modules po to practice mindfulness meditations? Uh, okay, so we actually have uh, mindfulness uh, strategies on the go. So you can do this every day. So if you want the modules, you actually have online modules that you can do. There are eight sessions no? uh, in terms of reduction of stress. So you can actually enroll. They have eight uh, modules and then you get a certificate at the end. But with CPU... Thank you. We might also um, consider no, doing a module that we can include in our training. But uh, we do have a lot of mindfulness on the go strategies that are very simple that you can include in your everyday life so that uh, they will be easy uh, versus the ones that, of course, if you need uh, training for several modules. So if you want, we can share the techniques no uh, in terms of the mindfulness on the go which are very easy no like uh, let's say looking at your hands you know and then looking looking at the creases and then you just do your deep breathing and also uh, another one which we did with the uh, monks is walking walking around the place where you focus on your feet and then that you are grateful that you have two feet carrying you despite your weight uh, and then you focus. No? And the other one is mindfulness eating, which I think during the pandemic is very good because you don't talk to each other. So less ang, ano, no? infection. So you say, oh, let us practice mindfulness eating. So you don't talk to each other and you will not infect each other. No? So those are things that you can do every day. And many others, no? yung uh, mga stretching. Uh, so if you're interested, you can just message me. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Here is another question. There might be instances that children who had a traumatic experiences from being tied up with a rope. How can we introduce this kind of activity without triggering their trauma? Or is it not possible at all? So is that for me? or for... Uh, Yes, Doctor. It's for, the, it's ah, for you. Okay. So as we know, um, when we talk about mindfulness for children, so I think invalid question. <laughs> uh, we actually, of course, are mindful about trauma triggers. So if it is a trigger, then we shouldn't expose them to the trauma trigger. Okay, so that is very important, and that uh, 
we are mindful with children that uh, uh, mindfulness has not been in terms of evidence no for the children that we serve has uh, not been uh, studied no to have evidence no so uh, mindfulness it uh, can be a therapy no so there are two the other one is uh, about stress reduction the other one mindfulness cognitive no it's uh, a therapy that will use cognitive and mindfulness. So those are two different ways of dealing with depression, anxiety, and they have each of them their modules, no? where, where you will include meditation. So if you just use, for example, uh, mindfulness in general for children, it should be part of the coping of your CBT rather than on its own because, as I've said, it might trigger. So you have to be careful that mindfulness uh, will actually trigger some of the traumatic experiences of children. So this one, I think this uh, presentation now is more for adults. I mean, for you, no? for the practitioner that you can do this, no? mindfulness versus doing it with the children. So it should be guided and part of uh, another lecture no? on how to use some of these techniques with children. Thank you. Mr. Goseko, do you have something else to add? Okay, for this question is for Mr. Goseko. Even though we are in this pandemic, activities or work where we belong are even multiplying, which we find difficult to find time to do meditations and even physical activities. What do you suggest, though, uh, Mr. Goseko? I think we, um, Mr. Gusek, as, as having um, technical problems. So any of you, um, to our uh, reactors, do you suggest anything or any physical exercise that you have been doing for the past um, year that uh, um, wala tayong nagagawa no, na nasa bahay lang tayo? Anong iyo, uh, Mr. Angelo, alis na. Ano yung mga nag nagiging experience mo or ano yung pinapractice mo na physical activity sa, iyo, sa bahay? Um, so, ayun, ang, ang ginagawa ko po dito sa bahay, no? so ay, actually, ang ginagawa ko kasi hindi din talaga ako masyadong aware kung ano yung maaari kong gawin. So, ang ginagawa ko, nagpupunta po ako sa mga YouTube. No? So, ang effective po, katulad no, sa rough flow na sinasabi nila na may mga video kayong pwedeng sundan, di ba? Pero may mga tutorial. So, ganun po yung ginagawa ko. No? So, available po kasi yung mga materials na kailangan natin gamitin. No? So, maganda, na, uh, advan uh, take advantage natin yung mga resources natin. No? So halimbawa sa YouTube, uh, I search ko na pwede ko pong gawin, no? especially pag uh, physical kasi madalas sa, uh, sa uh, panahon po na ito, no? nakakalimutan na natin yung, ari, yung alagaan, yung sarili natin kasi nakafocus na po tayo masyado dun sa epekto ng pandemic, masyado na po tayong pinakain no? ng pandemic. So maganda na ilabas po natin yun sa pangamagitan po ng paggawa ng mga iba't ibang physical activities na mabilis lang po siya and available po sa ating lahat. At Siyempre, pwede rin po sa bata at pwede rin po sa matanda. Christian, do you have something to share on your experience? Yes. And kung paano, po, paano mo kinakup up yung stress this pandemic? Oh, nasabi ko na ito kanina, pero I want to add more. Um, Siyempre, online class. So, ang isa sa mga masasuggest ko is take at least five minutes uh, per hour a break. For example, take a deep breath or... um go outside or your house to um to para maka ano ng hangin ganun at to refresh our mind ganun din yun lang po um ma'am Rachel Thank you so we have Mr uh Gio again we your back doctor <laughs> So um this question is for you even though we are uh in the pandemic activities or work where we belong in or even in the uh are even multiplying, which we find difficult to find time to do meditations and even physical activities. What do you suggest, Doc, na mga physical activities, Doc? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I think, um, for example, kasi in the community, we would prescribe aerobics or even Zumba, which can be found on YouTube. Maraming follow-along workouts that we can do that don't need any equipment. And as long as you have some space, uh, you can easily practice that. You can also do perhaps yoga or maybe tai chi if um if you're familiar with those. I think Maraminden videos and tutorials online. 
Thank you. Marami talagang nabibigay na tulong sa atin yung YouTube no at saka yung ano na pwede nating i-follow. So this question again is for Dr. De Balderama. What is are your thoughts in children below 10 years old undergoing mindful meditations as well as po uh, or do they do they need old uh, are they um kailangan po ba na old enough to understand the process of meditation po? Uh, well, uh, as I've said, you can actually uh, use some uh, mindfulness techniques for children, but be mindful that they are not uh, uh, going to uh, be reminded no, of their trauma because it should be part of a bigger um, therapeutic process no, that you undergo. Like, for example, for CBT, you can actually use it as part of your coping mechanisms. So before that should be uh, developmentally appropriate psychoeducation. So before you do the mindfulness techniques, there should be psychoeducation. So below 10, there is a way to explain no, the process of uh, uh, mindfulness um, using appropriate, uh, de developmentally appropriate uh, uh, material no, for less than 10. Yon. So you just need to be careful no, that they are not, uh, you know, uh, that you do not uh, trigger no, the traumatic experiences of children. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Doc. And siguro ito na nang last question. How, uh, for Mr. Gabriel, how thick po the, the Doc yung rope na ginagamit for rope flowing? Yes, um, you can use any thickness naman, pero we suggest yung mga around 10, 10 millimeters to 16 millimeters. If you want to be specific, yung weight niyan usually is around 200 to 600 grams. Pero there are commercially available ropes na umaabot po ng 1 kilogram kung gusto niyo talaga mag uh, heavy exercise. So you can use a lot po, kahit yung jump rope pwede na po. Um, it's really the form so that you can actually practice it properly. Okay, so I think every uh, uh, most of the questions have been addressed na po. So um, this is the final question for everybody, for everyone in the Zoom uh, room. Um, give a practical advice on resilience during this pandemic. So may I uh, start with Dr. Norieta Balderama? Uh, well, I think part of uh, uh, resilience is, of course, uh, making sure that you're able to deal with whatever uh, issues no, or difficulties or situations that you have. So as uh, lectured by Dr. No, so it is important for you to practice mindfulness every day. As you know, it, it uh, helps you with a lot of things, no, with your uh, in, 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 uh, emotional intelligence, in terms of concentration, even your physical health. Uh, in terms of your hypertension, in terms of uh, uh, your self-esteem. So there are a lot of benefits no, by doing mindfulness every day that eventually will help you with your resilience. No? So if you practice mindfulness and weave it into the things that you do, like uh, maybe when you're brushing your teeth, you, know, you practice mindfulness or uh, doing a lot of this, you will notice a lot of changes, no? in terms of your physical and your mental health. So please practice mindfulness no? every day yeah. to help you with resiliency. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Valderrama. And now we have uh, Mr. Gabriel Goseco. What is your take, no, Doc, um, during this time of, uh, to practice resilience during this time of pandemic? Um, for me, naman, I think, to practice resiliency, it's good to have a support group or even a group of friends or families because uh, in the same way that they can help you um, be more resilient, you can also help them and support each other because I think with many challenges, iba-iba yung mga challenges natin today. Eh. So if you have a good support group, good set of friends or family to help you, um, you can face these different challenges. Okay, for um from our youth reactor, um Sir Christian Ray Ramo. Any um, advice? From, 
Yes, for me naman po is, I have three parang elements to tell you dahil stay at home tayo ngayon. Um, parang we must practice gratitude, self-care, and self-love. Self -love. And I think it's the most important thing that we must consider. That's all. And lastly, we have uh, Mr. Angelo Alisna. So, ayun po, no, yung practice na ginagawa po no, for, uh, for my resilience. Uh, first po, no, maging productive po tayo. Gawin natin yung mga bagay na kung saan tayo nag improve Tapos tutukan din natin yung mga bagay na gusto pa nating matutunan. And also, umaten din tayo sa mga iba't ibang seminars, katulad po nito, no, either sumali sa webinar or maaaring sa FB Live katulad ng kasabi kanina. Kasi this past few months, so sumasali po ako sa mga iba't ibang consultations, webinars, no, especially about the children's life. And I enjoy I, that topic. Kahit away siya sa... Namimiss ko kasi siya kasi yung course ko, civil engineering. So, namimiss ko talaga yung mga topic about children's rights. And kapag sumasali ako doon, no, so parang napapalayo ako sa stress sa school. Kasi nakafocus ako sa mga webinar na katulad nito. No? So, nakafocus yung isip ko. So, parang nare-rejuvenate siya. So, yun po yung ginagawa ko practices. So, yun maganda sana na ilayo muna natin yung sarili natin sa mga worries natin. And umatamata at bigyan natin ng uh, breathing yung sarili natin. Yun lang po. Salamat. So there you have it, guys, our speakers. Thank you very much, Dr. Balderrama, Mr. Goseco, Christian, and Angelo. And to our very active participants, thank you very much. Muli, maraming salamat. And sabay-sabay po, tayo nating sabihin na ako, tayo, para sa bata. See you again. And this has been Dr. Rachel Anuele, your moderator for today. Stay safe and thank you very much for attending this webinar.